Hey guys, it's me, Missy, with Rusty Relics. It's me, Rodney. And we went live. <laughs> it's crazy. My nerves are a little bit high, I guess you would say. Yes, they yeah. are. They're very high. <laughs> but I'm not good at making videos because most of the time I'm working on like two or three different projects at a time. And so I just hop from one project to the next. And then also my schedule is a little bit crazy because it's football season in our house. So that takes up all of our time. So like we had a game last night, we had a game Monday, and then we have practice every day and it runs until about what, seven? Some is when we go, nights, yeah, yeah, we go to pick them up. So it's just like our whole life revolves around like at the store and then at football, at the store and at football. So it's like, I can be working on a project at six o'clock in the morning and then finish up the project at nine o'clock at night. So it's kind of hard to make sure that I'm recording is which that's why we haven't been doing very good at um, making YouTube videos. So we're going live. So a couple of things that I want to work on today um, and I'll show you. So I have these frames that um, need a paint job. And you can see like this one, the, the image on it is like messed up, but the back is still really good. So I wanna paint all of these white and put a new image on the inside of these. And then I have these old tins, right? Um, I have a whole box of these things. And I've been just racking my brain on what to do with them. And I think I have a really fun and cool project to do with these. So we're going to work on these. And then I make um, these block sitters that are like this. Um, and they have images on top of them. So these are already prepped. I've stained them and painted them um, with a coat of uh, white Dixie Bell paint. And then I'm going to... Mod Podge, my image on these, but these I'm actually starting to work on the Christmas blogs because I have so many fall ones. Um, I'm going to stop doing those and only do those when I have to, and I'm going to start working on the Christmas ones. So I'm excited to show you some of the Christmas images that we have um, and then work on that. So the first thing I want to do is just uh, get everything that needs to be painted, painted up. So we'll work on the frames. Okay, so I have the frames and I have the images. Can y'all hear our audio just fine? Can you? Hey, Tamitha. <laughs> so, okay, on this one you can see that it's messed up. So I'm not going to worry about the back of it because that the paint Penny is just... Penny said well, they, can, they can hear us just can. fine. The paint is just going to um, not look right with this image on the back. So I'm just going to do paint this side and this side, and then I'm going to paint the frames. And I'm just using the Dixie Belle um, chalk paint. I'm going to use the color cotton. And then I have just a regular paintbrush. And I have my spray bottle. So all I want to do is just give it a good coat of white paint. So that way when my image goes on there, it'll show up really good. So what did you wet the brush for? Oh, um, chalk paint works best with water. So I, on a small like this, I really don't wet the smalls. I just kind of uh, wet my paintbrush and start out that way. So it's not too thick because chalk paint is really thick. Crystal, she just used water with yeah. a continuous mist sprayer. Yeah, it's just water in a bottle. And that's what I... When you're painting a big piece like furniture or something like that, you just kind of want to... Is it the lid? Oh. Uh, you just want to spray the furniture piece down with water? No, uh, chalk paint is different than acrylic paint. Yeah. Chalk paint is 
a lot more forgiving. And it doesn't build up textures like acrylics will, unless you a dab and intentionally build texture with it. Right. Now Dixie Bell makes uh, the we use Dixie Bell chalk paint. That's what we carry, and uh, it goes on a lot smoother in our experience than a lot of other brands. I'm not going to name any of the other brands, but you know you don't want to throw them under the bus. But this one. It spreads further and it goes on a lot smoother. And we use water as a way to make it spread easier and get a, a cleaner, smoother, uh, smoother finish. finish. Yeah, it um, and it dries quick, has no fumes. So it works out really well. Margaret's from Ireland. Ooh. The kids would like that. Yeah. They think stuff like that is cool. Yeah, so it dries really quick. It is. There should be retailers everywhere. You can also visit our store online, Rusty Relics. I'm currently adding products every day because I have, after we got approved to put it online, I yeah, I got about 700 products that we carry that we have to, that we put online and I, Try to upload as much as I can using spreadsheets, but some of it can't be. How many coatings will the frames need? Uh, it looks like I'm going to have to go with two, just because they were dark. So it looks, it looks like they would work best if I did two coats. So I'm just going to do, this is how, this is literally how fast the paint dries. She's using cotton? Cotton. It's just like a pure white. But without being what the whitest white fluff is the whitest white. No, cotton's the whitest white. Is cotton the whitest yeah. white? So fluff is a little bit softer. But for the decoupage paper that we use, cotton works the best. So that's two coats. So that should do that on that. And I need to let these dry a little bit more. But it cleans up really easy when it's like that. Let me just spray it. So I have it, I've painted in my kitchen, I painted it. That's our dog. That's she's, our dog. She's old and she has a hard time getting up. Sometimes we have to help her up. She fell coming into the house last night. Old golden retriever. Yeah. She's old. What, she's 13? No. She's 14. She's then. 14. Yeah. She's 14, yeah. So that's how easy it is to clean up. And chalk paint dries really fast. It does. You can speed the process up by using a heat gun or a hair dryer. Yeah. But usually you won't have to because it does dry really fast. Yeah, so I'm just going to set these to the side and then I'm going to start painting on the tins and letting them. Because they'll need two coats of paint too. They are, Goldens are very sweet. They're good dogs. She's the best dog in the house. Funny story. She was hit by a car when, when we had her as a puppy. We had like just six months old. We, we had just got her crate trained and everything. And uh, this van swerved into our yard to hit her, but he didn't see Missy going to the mailbox. So we ended up, uh, she had to have surgery on her hip. And she's... She's been an old dog since she was a pup. Yeah, she's been an old dog since she was a pup. <laughs> she's been an old dog. She's had old hip. Okay, so these are the tins. And I have no clue where they came from. They were in the back of the store. So they very well could have been something that my mother came across and didn't toss away, which wouldn't surprise me. But I think that they are, is it like a roof tin? It's a ceiling tin. A ceiling tin? Yeah. So they have, they're rusted and they got a lot of character to them. So I used to hammer them on ceilings as, as tiles. We actually have some of the two foot by two foot still in the store in the oldest section of the building. Yeah. I like them. Um, so what I want to do is my decoupage image will go in the middle. 
but I want to give it a coat of white paint, but I don't want to cover up all of the rust and stuff on it. So I'll kind of like just dry brush it on there. So that way some of the characters still show some of the texture and stuff like that. So all I'm going to do is just paint it. The reason why we use white when we're doing decoupage is because it shows the, the colors are more vibrant and show more cleanly because we use a really thin rice paper. It's a washi right. style mulberry paper. And uh, it just looks so much more vibrant on right. white as opposed to uh, the different colors. Like if we painted it yellow, the yellows won't show through as well. They'll kind of blend in. Even though we seal all of our uh, rice decoupage paper with fixative to keep it from running. Because inkjet printers give you better results than laser jet as far as the color goes. But a laser jet won't run when it gets wet. This can unless you spray it with fixative. Okay, so the important thing here that you want to do is you know that your decoupage paper is going to go like in the center of the tile. So that's where you want to make sure that you have your good full coverage and that it's all white. And then as you're going to the edges, you can just like do lighter pressure and then just do the dry brushing so that way it's not taken away from the character, if that makes sense. Uh, so that way it gives it like that. Tina said, once the paint's on, are you going to sand it more to show more of the metal and distress it? I can. I just kind of base that off what it looks like afterwards. You could, though, easily if you wanted more, like after you've got your paper on there and you have it, if you want to distress it and let that show through, you could easily do that for sure with just some sandpaper. I always just kind of see where it takes me. I, I say this all the time about furniture and, and stuff like that, but it lets you know, like I'm, I, I tell you, like the piece will let you know what it wants to do. <laughs> I'm a firm believer in that. So again, just making sure that my center is. May nice May asked, "How's it going?" She's sorry that she's late. It's going fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> she's nervous. May May knows. May May said, "I made it." <laughs> she made it. Yeah. May May made it. Uh. Nice. So yeah, that's why she dry brushes a little bit to keep it from looking, to give it that distressed look without having to go back in and sandpaper it. So yeah. if you dry brush towards the end, just like you would on a canvas, dry brush to give it that, that little bit of texture, that's what she's doing right there on the metal. And see how on the edges, she's yeah. getting that? So it gives it that natural distressed look. It's just light pressure, just barely dragging it off because may, your first, strokes or your heavy pain is going to be right here in the center and then as you take it to the edges kind of just lightens it up shannon said you got this i got this i got this so how many tiles are we doing today um i got three because i got three okay. images we have a whole box but we're only doing three. Oh yeah i have a whole box of these this one has a lot of the flaking on it, but I really don't want to take any of that off. I like I like how it is like that. And this side's kind of boring compared to this side. So let's see if I can just... Just do... Maymay says she asked the maidens to say that they made it when they got here just to explain that. Yeah. Audio is low. Your mic's too far down is what it is, I believe. You think so? Possibly, or maybe we just need to speak louder. Can we move it up? Yeah, just turn it up a little bit. We need to make sure we're staying in the yellow bars. And right now we're in the green bars. See how I like, I like how it's like that. I like the peeling of it. I think it looks good. Yeah, right there. You're good. 
All right. All, All right, right so. we adjusted the mics up, so it should be a little bit better than it was. I kind of just need to let these dry a little bit more. The tiles? Mm-hmm. And I might do a second coat on it, and I might not have to. It just depends on how good it dries. If the rust shows through too much, then I'll need to do a second coat. But I think it should be fine. My mate said much better. Much better. We have a tendency to talk really low. Yeah, if you have a microphone on, I'll go, I'll talk low. Yeah, but if you're in person. If I'm in person, I'll talk loud. Super loud. But a microphone and I'll talk low. All right, so I'm going to give these another coat. I really should use a fresh brush on that. It's okay. She's going to start second coating the... Uh... Yeah, I'm just going to put a second coat on the frames so that way... They're nice and clean and have full coverage. And chalk paint's safe to use on your kitchen counter like we're doing. And uh, it comes off really easy, like she said. It cleans up. It, it just cleans up off. water. Yeah. Um, I get it all over the place. Like I have it on my counters, on my tile floors. <laughs> I've even gotten it out of my clothes. There's not, I don't own a lot of clothes that doesn't have chalk paint on it. That's true. <laughs> because like I'm always like just working on a project here and there. So, and it's usually on my hands, on my arms, stuff like that. If y'all have any questions, don't don't hesitate to ask. These frames would look really pretty too, like probably with a dark wax on top of them after they're all done. I just have to see what it looks like. This, which, this frame has some damage, so the dark wax would really probably get into that really good and just make it, give it that antique look. This, which I think the images that I have to go in here are very like vintage and antique-ish looking. I think they're really pretty. I'll be surprised if these make it to the store because Emily likes stuff like this. This is right up her alley. Do you think I can paint that about everything you see? Um. Yes, she does. Yeah. She does. Yeah, I guess so. Um, but then I believe there are some pieces that don't need to be painted. Like, I have furniture that I won't paint um, because I love the original of it. But, like, if I go somewhere and I find something that I like but I don't like the color of it, I, it doesn't stop me because I'm like, oh, I can paint it. And then you can literally paint anything just about. I mean, you can paint glass. You can paint metal. Fabric. Fabric. She painted a chair. I painted a chair. Okay, so yesterday, um, you know, it's September the 1st, so everything has to uh, be flipped over to fall, and there's a lot of stuff going on in September, October, November. Um, so I want to, I've got two windows in front of the store, and they are each different. So one is more like rustic. And the other one is more like a, like inside a home. It's got that kind of feel to it. So I had a chair in the back of the store that was just left there. And it was hideous, but it was really comfortable. But it, it was just hideous um, that I wanted to do something with. But I didn't like to. So I wanted to put it in the chair. And I also had this cabinet that I got Rodney to cut in half for me. Um, and it's not, it's not a great piece, but it's definitely a good piece for like store display and stuff like that. So I spent all day yesterday painting the chair, um, painting the cabinet. I had frames that needed like a, an image in it. So I just spent all day yesterday painting all of those pieces. Um, to get those ready to go into the window. So yeah, I have. I do think that I can pretty much paint anything because 
Like I looked at the chair and was like, I don't like this color, but I want to use it. So I, I painted it. <laughs> and it's not great. I, I would never put it on the floor. It's half painted. It's only, you can only, you only, what you see is what I painted. I didn't paint the parts that I didn't have to because I didn't want to waste the paint. <laughs> Debbie, there's no specific brush that you should use. You can, as long as you're using a quality brush, you can use Dixie Bell brand. That's what we use. Yeah. Uh, we also use Purdy brushes because Purdy is a really good quality brush. Whatever it is, you don't want your bristles falling out. So if you're working on a large piece, we actually use rollers. This is my one of my favorite brushes, and this is just the Bell, isn't it? Yeah, it's called the Bell. That's just the Bell. It's one of my favorite brushes, and then that's the Angle. Is which this would be my um, my other go-to brush, and then the brush that I used yesterday is which I don't have it over here, but it's that uh, the oval, the big oval yeah. one. Oval round. Yeah, the oval round. Or so oval like on large. the big piece of furniture that I was doing yesterday, I like using that oval round. I meant um, oval large. That's my fault. Oval large, yeah. May May asked, uh, "Is there one piece you painted and sold you wish you had kept?" Hmm. I liked that green nightstand that I took. <laughs> um, what? That gray, that gray, that gray. Uh, golly. That French linen yeah. dresser thing, yeah. like it was like a buffet. Yeah, yeah. I could have kept that one. That was a nice piece of furniture too. Because we even talked about swapping it out swapping for it our, out, our yeah. TV stand. It was like, it actually was not even, that wasn't the original piece. It went to a buffet. Like, I mean, um, a china cabinet. So like we took the bottom part, it was gigantic. It was huge. It was, you couldn't do anything with it. Um, so we took the top part off and put a base on it and legs and then made it like a china cabinet. And then we just painted the buffet part of it and put it and sold two different pieces. But I would have kept that buffet. It had all the drawers. I had everything. It would have been good. Pretty Petal, I think you're talking about us more than likely. Our store is, is a little bit different than most stores. Our channel is about what we do, and sometimes we'll post videos about what we do in the store. But you can't. we have a boutique clothing in our store. Right now, it's offline. We don't yeah. have anything. Yeah. Okay, so Dixie Bell, maybe wants me to talk about Slick Stick. So Dixie Bell makes a product called Slick Stick. So let's say you wanted to, to paint your countertop, this slick surface right here. I just or, painted that, um, uh, that curio cabinet. Yeah, so we had a, lam a laminate curio cabinet. It's got that plastic laminate on it. It's cheap looking. You know it when you see it. Yeah. You put slick stick on there and let it sit 24 hours and come back and paint, and your paint will will actually stick to that surface because the slick stick actually bonds, bonds itself to the surface of the plastic, which is amazing. It's an amazing product. You can feel it. You can feel the difference in the texture of that um, slick stick versus like a paint and primer. It actually, you can feel the grip right. in the slick stick um, versus like primers, which you can feel it in the primer too, like boss primer. You can right. feel it, but it for a service like that, that dresser, uh, that green dresser I did, the black dresser I did, um, the curio cabinet that I just painted, all of that had to be uh, slick stick first. Right. So primer by itself won't bond to a surface like the like we're talking about the laminate surfaces where it's slick. Mm -hmm. So you can actually, after you paint something, you put let's say you put kills on it, you wipe your hand down it, you're gonna pull paint off that surface every stinking time it's. And then so Dixie Bell created a product called Slick Stick that actually melts itself to the surface, which is, so it's a, it's a lot different than a regular primer. You can use, um, like, so if you wanted to paint glass, like the vases and stuff That's like that. That's what Jamie just yeah, said right here. If you wanted to paint those, you would put a coat of Slick Stick, two coats of Slick Stick yep. onto the glass, 
um, walk away for 24 hours, let it cure, and then come back, and then you're, you're good to go. You can paint and everything with If it. you see any surface texture, you can lightly sand it back smooth, mm -hmm. just like you would a chalk paint, so you can get that, that smooth surface. Whatever you use to paint slick stick on it needs to be disposable. So, like, yes. if you do not use your good paint brushes to do it, because you can't wash slick stick out. So... And you can't use, you shouldn't use foam brushes either because it starts melting melt the foam. The foam. Um, so you just, I like to use the chip brushes, of which I don't have any over here, but just the cheap chip brushes that you can get. Um, use that and then toss them when it's done. Because you're not going to be able to, you shouldn't wash it down the drain or anything like that. You just need to toss it when it's done. Tina, it should. I would test a small amount of it on the tile first if I was going to paint my backsplash. Now, if you're going to chalk paint your your backsplash when you're done, I would. You want to uh, top clear top coat it with something uh, hard like Gator Hide or uh, Polycrylic by mm -hmm. uh, Men Wax. I think yeah. is who makes yeah. it. I and recommend Gator Hide because we know how hard that finish is yeah. and it is hard to sand off once you get Gator Hide on there. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I want to, I guess I'm going to do the blocks while this finishes up drying. Heidi, you just paint fabric just like you would anything else with a chalk paint. Now, I don't, I, I've seen people use clay based paints to do it before. We don't recommend that unless it says the clay-based paint can paint fabric, but chalk paint actually, Dixie Bell actually says you can paint fabric with it. Um, they can get slick stick and primer and gator hide from us. Yes, yeah. yeah, all of our products, not all of our products, most of them are online right now. I've got about 400 more to load up. If so. they are, yeah, if we don't have it online yet, they can send us a message. You can yeah. send us a message to, um, because I carry all of Dixie Bell's products in the store. And right. again, we have it, it in the store. Uh, it'll be online soon. Right. It's just a bigger undertaking For than I had For a long time, you couldn't get Gator Hide. Like, we couldn't even get Gator Hide. Yeah, no, they had to reformulate it. Yeah. And then during COVID, you couldn't get it you because get it. it was just selling out too quick. Right. Okay, so while we're waiting for everything to dry, so I have, I actually have a bunch of these blocks. Linda, we do. We seal it either with wax, clear coats, or uh, gator hide. Oh, yeah. You don't have to seal chalk paint. That's what they say. We always do just because out of habit, because you know you don't want somebody sitting a cold drink on something and then it forming a ring on it and stay in there. Yeah. Yeah, Slick Stick's an amazing product. I uh, I carry all three sizes in the store at all times. These are my decoupage papers for the blocks. Look at Santa. I love the reindeer. And that reindeer. Santa and another reindeer. I love reindeer. Tina, I don't see why you couldn't decoupage on your back backsplash after painting it and putting slick stick on it. If you slick stick it, you could stencil it too. Yeah, you could put stencils on it or transfers. Problem with transfers is sometimes they the clear coats like to eat them up. Yeah, they do. Um, so I, w I really wouldn't recommend a transfer because you never know. But yeah. Maybe I said, OMG, that deer. <laughs> that one? That's a May May deer. Tamma says, oh my stars, that's Santa. And Shannon said that she wants the picture frames. But you haven't even seen the, the design that's going to go on them yet. I got that. It's right okay. there. Okay, yeah. That's what I want to put in the picture frames. I think it'll be cute. The vintage florals. I guarantee you Emily will want these <laughs> when she sees them. I guarantee you she will. Okay, so these are my blocks. So, again, I stained them in um, DC Bell's No Pain Gel Stain in Walnut. 
And then I just let it dry and then I put two coats of fluff on these and they're ready to go. Okay, so when I'm doing decoupage like this, um, in this amount of blocks, I like to do it differently than how I would do, like how I'm gonna do the tins. The tins, I can't do it this way, but um, the blocks, I can do it this way. So what I like to do, and I'm just gonna start with four, and I might just stick to the four, we'll see. What I like to do is this just Mod Podge, and it's just a regular, um, this is actually, I stole this brush out of Rodney's art kit, so I don't even know what it is. It's just a paintbrush. So what I like to do is just um, put a coat of Mod Podge on here. This is what Mamey is talking about, or similar. Christmas and fall. fall. I actually made a bunch of them as a test to, because uh, right. you all, you always want to before you show anything off, you want to always have it to perfection, basically. So that the, obviously the graphics changed quite a bit since then. It was a yeah, work in progress. Mary, yes, we do sell slick stick. Yes. Let's see. Slick stick goes on really easy too. It's not hard to work with. It's it's not. When you go from chalk paint, like you do a lot of chalk painting, um, you, you have to remind yourself what you're working with because it's not going to go on like chalk paint does. But it, it's um, once you start using it, it'll. And it really does go a long way. Okay, so what I did is I just put a coat of Mod Podge on here and then I'm just gonna let it dry. Like I'm not gonna go ahead and put my images on. I'm just gonna let this dry. And then come back through. The wood we use, it's just pine. Oh yeah, just stain it. Uh, Kimberly, we're working on an online class. Uh, May May uh, talked us into it, so we are uh, we're working out the details. We should have them all ironed out by the end of next week. Do I want to do just Santa? I got four blocks. One, two, three. I can do these four images. I like the be merry too, though. Linda, we buy the images and then we take and adjust them. And uh, I use two different paint programs to, to adjust them the way we want them to look. And when it's all finished, I use a software called Krita that's free to buy. And I also use a product called uh, software called Rebel. It's not. You can try it for free though. So we try to fix all the images to suit what we need it to do and look the way we need it to make. And some of the some of our other images I actually drew out myself. Right. And uh cuz I like to do that kind of stuff. I'm going to do I'm going to do these guys. We do sell the rice paper. Each sheet is uh 5.99 5.99 I think, I yeah. think it is. We do. And it would be cheaper, but since we have to seal up the, the surface, uh, the sealers are a little bit uh, not as cheap as I would have wanted them to be. So what I'm going to do is put it on here. So this block has nothing on it. I didn't mosh podge this block. It's just a plain block. I'm just using it for reference. So what I'm going to do is kind of just figure out where I want it. I'm 
kind of losing the star right there though. And the rice paper isn't online yet on our online store, but that's a work in progress. We'll have it all, we should have it all up by the end of next week. Everything's a work in progress with us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's right. Everything's a work in progress Everything. for us. Everything. But, so all I'm doing is just rubbing it around the edges so that way I can see my crease. Santa has the best rosy cheeks ever. Yeah, he does. Yeah, originally his hat was pink, so I had to go back in and fix him and darken him up and make him a red hat and then go around and I added a few little snowflakes around the top of him so it would look a lot better. And what I'm going to do is just tear it on the line. Okay, so some people use water with rice paper and they tear it, and I've done that. Um, and it, it does work. It does make it easy, but... Um, I have a heavy hand. I have a heavy hand when it comes to paint. I have a heavy hand when it comes to the water. So it can get on your image and then it can have that watermark or whatever that I don't like. So I'm better at just straight up tearing it. But this paper is really, it's strong, but it's easy to tear. So I just pinch it between my fingers and then I just tear down the line that I made with the crease. And then... Gigi said, you guys are so talented and thank you for sharing with us. Thank you. <laughs> I think May May gets the credit for a sharing. Yeah. Because uh, I don't... We tend to do a lot of stuff and we never really show how much stuff we actually do right I and just, since we have two employees now it's a, it's much easier for us to be able to get all the things made and done for the store that we need to we need to do yeah, yeah so tearing helps roughen those edges up so it looks more natural when it goes on the piece mm-hmm uh, we'd have a bunch of different ways that we do it. Sometimes she'll take and, and glue the whole thing down and then take sandpaper and, and go right. over the edge around it. That's what I was going to say. Like for, this, for these blocks, I like to just do, I've learned to just do the whole thing, right? Just because of the texture of everything. So I've learned to just like cover the whole block versus going around and going around the images in that kind of way. But like for this, the like the little picture frames, I'll probably do the same thing. But for the tins, I'll kind of go a little bit. I won't go as close to the edges, but I'll go a little bit out. But some of the images that I've done before, I just I need just the edges. I need to tear just around the edges of it, which either way works. Like you can do it with these <clears throat> that way, or you can do it, you know, this way too. It just depends on the image. These two are my favorite, absolutely. I think that's the reindeer that Shannon and May may like, and I think that's the, I'm pretty sure that's the Santa Claus that Tamitha likes so much. Here reminds me of the Santa Claus tea, uh, shirt that we sold last year. Yeah, our Christmas Sweatshirt. Santa. Tina loves the Santa too. I love vintage Santa, Santa and the vintage elves. Yeah. Anything vintage. Like a lot of people think that that's creepy, but I like it. The el vintage elves, I have a, uh, me and the girls love the vintage elves. Uh, Allison said, asks, do you need to tear instead of cut? If for the, I mean, the reason why I tear it is because if say it's not, if I go a little bit off, it has a softer edge where if you cut it, it's going to be a straight line and it's going to be a hard line and where it's not crazy noticeable. It is to me, it is noticeable. Like I can spot it right off the bat. So that's why I tear, and so that's why my tear is not exactly straight. It's kind of like a little bit waved. And then 
that way when you go to put it on because it's where well, it's very thin it is um when you cut it there is there's a straight line and it is i think it is noticeable here's so a, i prefer to tear it here's an interesting question what made y'all go into the rusty relics business okay so um i grew up in this <laughs> That's my best thing. I grew up in this. Uh, Mama always had a booth somewhere. Um, so we were always just out looking and she always redid stuff and she was always stuff, a crafter. She used to make those um, puff paint uh, shirts that we used to have to wear all the time. And then she did some cross stitching and stuff like that. She, But we always had a booth somewhere. Um, let's see, in Clinton. A long, long time ago, there was KC's, and we had uh, we had a booth in there. And then I actually have vendors in my store now that I knew as a little girl in KC's, and now and now they're vendors with me. So I grew up doing this kind of stuff. And Mama was a very good decorator. She had a very good eye. She was um, she could. She could go into the oldest, creepiest barn and find the rusted, oldest, just, I would say it was junk. And she could turn it into something amazing. Her house was amazing. Um, she was really good at that. So that's where I got a lot of my skill from. May May said your mom had a great eye. She had a, a great eye. Very good, very good. But how did we end up at Rusty Relics? Um, okay, yeah, she, yeah. Um, Mama opened up the store. She started out really small. Yep. Um, opened at what seven, eight years ago? Are we going mm -hmm. on something like that? Um, she started out really small, and then a year later, she moved into the building that we are in now, um, is which is an old piece of history to Clinton. It has it's like over a hundred years old, yep. something like that. Um, and now we have, I don't know how much our square footage is. You know that. 11,600. There you go. A lot. And we have 74. Se yeah, 74, 74 vendors. 74 vendors. Um, 78 booths, 74 vendors. Yeah, that are located inside our store. So, yeah, she just kind of folded us in, you know. Yeah. She had the the store down the road, then she did she did the store. She got the other one, and so we were kind of like folded in. Yeah. It's like, hey, you're going to do this. <laughs> and so anytime she said you're going to do this, you do this. And it's been that way since, since I was in high school and me and Missy were dating yeah. in high school. It's always been what she says we do. Mama was both. Thank you, Tina. It is, it is a huge store, and sometimes it's too big, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Especially when somebody comes in and they're like, hey, where's this at? And you're like, oh, I don't know, honestly. If I took the picture, I'll know. If I can see a tag, I'll know. Okay, so on rice paper, it has like these things right here, Is which this is why I don't cut, because like, I don't know what that's called. It's just a fiber, right? Is that what you call it? Yeah, it's mulberry that, fiber. Yeah, the fiber. Okay, so you can very gently tear them out. But, like, that's one reason why I don't like cutting it is because when you cut clack. that, it will... Rodney rocks. Rodney rocks. No, clack rocks. It'll um, make a hard line. Because these fibers right here are softer than that. So on this one, I didn't so much do the whole image. So like I did this one like that, and I'm doing this one like this. Because it had more of those fiber things in there. So I'm just kind of tearing it out like that. And then these are dry. I should be able to get those done with one coat. Yeah. I don't see why not. I don't either. So if you're just tuning in, what she's doing right now is uh, prepping the decoupage paper before she actually or, applies it to the blocks. Yeah, my blocks. So on an image like this where it takes up so much of the rice paper, instead of trying to go around and tear all around the small things, that's where I like to go 
and just tear the edges of it off. We are. We're Clanton, Alabama, just like May May. We're in downtown. We're located on 2nd Avenue North. I'm going to make these even. Usually when you visit May May's store, she's going to tell y'all to come. Where else are y'all going? And we do the going? same thing. Where else are y'all going? Because there's so many cool places in Clanton to check out. You got us. You got May May Made It. You got So Charming. So Charming is a great place. There's, there's a, good places to eat at. A couple, a boutique that's right down the road from, or two boutiques that's right down the road from us. Right, and then we have Chess is right Hope down the Chess road. Boutique. Then you got Peach Park, Durbin. Yep. Yeah, there's all uh, kinds of places. Mulberry Hill. Yeah, that's the boot. Um, Did they rename it? It's um, mulberries for the kids' clothing. Yeah. And then um, cedar and bloom is cedar the, and bloom. Uh, that's it. And then you got suits me's, which is down the road too. So there's all kinds of stuff. Well, heck, the feed stores right down the road from us are good. Mamay said, I won't take over your chat every time you're live, but I feel like I'm watching my baby bird fly the nest. It's so funny because I get on Mamay's live and I just watch her. I never say anything. But then I'll like text her afterwards. Yeah, it is funny. Because <laughs> sometimes it'll be, sometimes she'll be watching the, the, the uh, show afterwards when it's time for us to go to bed. And then I get to hear Mamay as I'm falling asleep. While Missy's still up watching. I th it's funny because, like, um, I can watch May May's live, like, while I'm cooking dinner or something like that, and the kids will be talking to May May, like yeah. she's in the room. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's fun. It's hilarious. It's, yeah. And Clack's right. I've known him since I was a little kid. I hung, yeah. I hung out with his wife's brother. That's who I grew up with. So we would go over to their house all the time. It was fun times. Okay, so here's my images, right? So I got them on here. Thanks, Regina. Regina said this is the first live she's ever watched, and she's loving it. <gasps> wow. That's a, a lot of that's a lot of pressure. <laughs> yeah, that is. It's it's our first live. It's our so. first live. That's a lot of pressure. All right. Okay. This is my favorite way. To decoupage. Okay, so I have my image. So there's a coat of Mod Podge on here and it's dry. And I have my image. And I'm going to put it where I want to put it. And then I want to tear a piece of parchment paper. Jamie, there's a lot of stuff to do. In Clanton. There's a lot of stuff to do in Alabama. It, it's, I don't know. It's, it, the reason why we support each other so much in Clanton is because we are truly a downtown. Right. And it is about the community. Yeah, see, May May just covered it right there. Community over competition. Because you can have three boutiques on the same block and everybody can do well as long as you're not competing oh, against each other. That's another boutique that's yeah, right across like right, from us. Okay, yeah. for example, right beside mm -hmm. our building is Apple and Lowe Boutique. You got Apple and Lowe, you got Cedar and Bloom, and then you have um, Willow 31 all on the same street. Yep. And all three of them carry something different. They all three have a different... Yep, different vibe, mm -hmm. service different clientele. <laughs> right. So you can find something for sure. Yep. Okay, so I have my Mod Podge is dry. I have my image where I want it to go. And then I have a piece of parchment paper that I'm going to um, just lay down on the top. And then I have an iron. And it is set on... Which it turned off. It's it's an auto off iron. Yeah. Do I have and we to, didn't realize it. I didn't realize that. Is it going to turn back on or do I have to unplug it? No, it should turn back on. It's just blinking. Well, maybe you do have to plug it back up, unplug it and plug it back in. I've never had one that you had to unplug and plug back in just to get it come back on. I usually just... So this is a new technique that she's been using to do the the Mod Podge. Or, and, uh, is it because it's in the extension cord? 
Possibly. It's no, over it here. did it. It okay. reset. Okay, yeah, this is my favorite way to. If I can do it this way, I like to do it this way. So I just have my set on cotton because that's on this one, it's the highest heat setting. We, May May, we just, just started like ironing that. these last week. Because um, we started testing it out to see if we could melt the Mod Podge. Yeah. That's, so, yeah, it's probably it was been about last, a week. Yeah, it's, week it was last two. week when we first started doing it. It's my favorite way to do it. Thanks for stopping by, Jennifer, and you have a good day at work, hopefully. Hopefully it'll be a good day. Yeah. Did you iron the fall ones that she got? I don't think so. No. No, no we didn't. didn't. No, iron she didn't. the fall ones. Or the cutting board, either, because we were still trying to work out the problem with the... The cutting uh, board that's at her shop, I didn't iron, but the other one that I did iron. Yeah. Yeah. This one. Yeah. This one's ironed, the one at her shop's not. But mm -hmm. we were still, at that time, we were st still no steam, dry. Yeah, iron. no steam, no steam. It's just heat. Okay, so mine's. Mulberry rice paper, Mary. So I, I have it on there, I have it lined up, and then I'm just gonna put my iron on there, and I'm just gonna kinda put a little bit of pressure on there. And I'm just gonna. Like iron it on. <laughs> Tina, the iron does help keep wrinkles out. One of the ways we do without using an iron is to use a brayer roller yeah. with wax paper over the top. And We're using that. parchment paper here. But you see how easy that was? It's on there. Then after that, we can clear coat it. Yep. If you want to clear coat it. We generally clear coat everything. Okay, so this is why I like to do the whole image. Mini press is a great idea because the Cricut mini press is the one that you hold in your hand and you just sit down on something. They have those little little irons too. Um, I want one of those. You want one <laughs> but, of those? Yeah, but this one works good too. I mean, like this is, I mean, just use what you already have. That's what I do. Mame says she could probably use her Olisol travel iron. Yeah, the, a little travel iron. Yeah, I bet so. As long as it gets to a hot setting. She says she's going to bring you a mini press. She has an extra one. You yes, will yes. like it. Okay, same thing. Just put it where you want it to go and then just put pressure on it. She said, or else. Or else. And that is that. And it melt it melts the Mod Podge layer underneath, which yeah. is so which You can so do this cool. with fabric. Like if you're if you have something that you're wanting to put fabric on, you can Mod Podge, let it dry, lay your fabric down, and Mod Podge it on there. I did that with um, a thing that I had to make the um, not that long ago, and then I did it, and then I ended up saying, Ugh, "I need to take this off," and I took the fabric off, and um, yeah, that stuff was on it. We'll be top coating with Dixie Bell clear coat. Yeah, I prefer to instead of Mod Podge, I prefer to use um, Dixie, Dixie Bell's clear coat. Um, I like to use it in satin because it, the Mod Podge, while it says it's matte, it still has a sheen to it. So um, I like to use just the Dixie Bell satin clear coat. Because originally we used Mod Podge to coat it and then uh, seal it afterwards. It's not easy. It's really not. I mean, Mod Podge is great, but the clear coat, Dixie Bell's clear coat, just goes on so much smoother. And it, I, I like the clear coat versus the Mod Podge when it comes to the top coat. And the parchment paper keeps it from uh, burning the rice burn, paper. Burning the rice paper, and it allows it not to stick to the Mod Podge. Yeah. Now, with the with the brayer roller, you're going to want to use wax paper instead. Okay, so on this like that, I didn't get exactly to the. I didn't. I tore it a little bit over. That's okay because I can sand that off. We print all of our images on an inkjet printer. Yes. Same thing goes on this side. I just sand that excess off. And then there's my image. Now putting rice paper through an inkjet is uh, 
it's difficult. Our best way that we've found to do it is either tape the top of it or uh, spray it with uh, some tacky spray. Not much. You spray the paper that you're going to lay it down on with tacky spray. So essentially, we it takes two pieces of paper if you do it that way. The way we do it with taping, we only use one. We use the same paper over and over that we tape our images to. Oh, yeah. You could do it to cardstock as well. And it helps with the bleed through. So if it gets on the rollers, if you just run the, ri the rice paper through the ink jet on its own, it's going to coat the, ro the rollers. You're going to get ink on it, and then it's going to ruin your very next one. How cute. Vinny's Vittles, Rodney the Video. <laughs> I love them. I got a lot of different images that are Christmas that I want to do. Tina says she finds that Mod Podge stays tacky. I don't think we've had that problem with it Matt. Can, it, it, um, it can stay tacky. That's why I don't like to do it on as a top coat. Right. I love it for the base. Right. But I do not love it for the top coat. Okay, so I kind of want to see... If I need to do these. Um. And the reason why we're going to use Dixie Bell is because they make an actual flat top coat instead of, uh, you know, where it says it's flat, but then you get it and it's got a sheen to it. Mm -hmm. Dixie Bell's top coat is absolutely flat. It's flat. It says it's flat. It's flat. I think I'm going to be able to get by on just doing one coat of these. Yeah. So that way I don't have to go too much over the... you don't have any rust bleed through. Right. It didn't bleed through the rust. So your chalk paint, if you're going to have bleed through, you're going to have bleed through immediately on the first coat. Yeah, you'll know it. You'll know if you need to prime a piece first, right after you get done putting the coat on. Okay, so let's see. I have three images. Vent said, why are y'all not at work? <laughs> this is work. It's my off day. Vince knows my schedule. <laughs> yeah. It's my off day. All right. So I think I'll do this one like that. Let's see. I got one more. What does it look like? This one has a lot on the edges. I feel like I could do this one like that. And then I can do this one like this. So, okay, Rodney made, um, he made me one, and I should be able she to. She said she wanted a stand. Yeah. I didn't know, and I don't have a, a dado blade for my table saw, so I had to run it through there real quick and get it done this morning. So it's really rough looking right now. Yeah, but one of these fits in perfectly. So I want to make sure that whatever I do, I'm using that one. Okay, so this one, yeah. So he made a stand, so the um, the tin goes into it, and then it'll stand up. And I think that's really cute. So he'll make me a stand for those two, so we don't need that one. But I just wanted to make sure that the stand that he did make me goes for the tin, because all I kind of have to do is just take a pair of pliers and... Um, straighten out the edges a little bit so that way it goes into the line. So I want to make sure that I'm putting the right decoupage paper on the right one. Because when they tore these out, they didn't care. They just they were yanking them out. They so. did not care. Okay, so we'll start with the water can. All right, okay. So all I'm going to do is kind of go around and just kind of tear it around the image. Make sure not to get any of the flowers. Did your iron just cut off? Yeah, but I don't need it for this because okay. I can't iron on this. I mean, I, I assume I can iron on the metal. But you won't be able to get down in all the little grooves. But yeah, this metal has too much dents in it to do that. Plus, some of the metal would get hot. And you gotta take it. Touch it. Okay, so yeah. And we make these decoupage papers in both large 
format like this and in small format, like for the uh, six by six blocks that we use, or five and a half by five and a half blocks actually. Clack, are you talking about the stands? So she's going to be using the good old fashioned old school method on this one where we yeah. use the, uh, the decoupage. Decoupage, and we're going to use a just. Okay, are you so using your hand or are you going to use a brayer roller? Um, I used my hand on this one too because of the, the brayer roller. You know how it, right. it's the metal is bent and all that kind of stuff, and I don't want to risk. I got the worst I got water you. bottle. I got you. So yeah, all this stuff is, uh, anybody can do it. That's the great thing about it. Anybody yeah. can do it. If you're going to try to print your own off with an inkjet printer, make sure you spray a fixative on it. Oh, uh, I'm dripping. Like art, it's the same stuff that artists use on their canvas. Spray that on there and you'll be good to go. You won't have to worry about your ink bleeding. All right, so I'm just going to put a thin coat kind of where I want my image to go. I want to make sure that Make sure you speak up. And once you lay it down, that's it. You just lay it down. So that I'm just mashing it in. GG, not yet, but they will be online uh, by the end of, by Friday of next week, they'll be online. Yeah. The decoupage? Yeah, yeah the, the paper, the elves, the Santas, the all that stuff. Yeah. So I just, I'm going, I'm putting a coat where I didn't quite get the decoupage, but that's okay. And then I'm just mashing it in. And if shipping looks outrageous on there, uh, call us at the store or send me a message because more than likely it's being over-calculated because it bases, all, bases it all off of the individual item size and weight. So if you order multiple items, it'll be like, oh, that's going to be this price, but I'm actually going to stuff it into a probably the same box that I can fit it in, and it'll be a lot cheaper than what it actually is. So I do a lot of refunding on shipping because it never calculates it correctly. All right, how cute. So before I go and put a top coat on it, I like to make sure that the um, Mod Podge is all the way dry. So that's like why I didn't do the blocks or anything like that. But it, well, the blocks are dry because I ironed it. But they it still heated it up and kind of did that melt thing. So I like for them to cool off and then just dry all the way before I put... Um, any kind of top, um, coat. top coat on it. So same thing with this. I kind of want to just make sure. And then when I go through and do the top coat, I'm going to do the top coat on the entire thing, right? So I'm going to seal up the rust and all the flakiness. I'm just going to seal all that up um, when I go through and put the top coat on it. Mary said, when will your blouses be back in stock? Ooh. That's a great question. That's a great question. <laughs> We honestly don't know at this point. Uh, they were supposed um, to be back on back in stock yeah. last month towards the end of the month, and then that didn't happen. And then August was a, a rough month. August was rough. Uh, because of the heat, a lot of people didn't get out, so we're kind of stuck with the stock we have. Yep. But we're hoping sometime either by the end of this month or the first part of next month to get our online boutique back up yep because it's it's not a it's that one's not an us issue that's an actual stocking issue like we're just now starting to get CeeLo jeans that we ordered months ago four five months ago we're just now getting them in they just shipped they haven't even hit, gotten to the store yet
Same but. thing. I'm going to tear this all around the image. I wish fall was right around the corner. Even though fall's officially here, it still feels like the middle of summer. Um, I believe our football player would say the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> He's been practicing in this heat six days a week, five days a week. He's done amazing, though. He's grown a lot this season. Jamie, it's just rusteatrelics.com. Uh, but right now, I think the only two things that's actually on our online boutique is just body, just uh, the body, suits, body yeah. suits. That's it. Everything else had to come back, had to come off because of stocking oh, issues. Sorry. What is Gavin? He's a right tackle. Oh, left, don't ask me that. Left tackle. Gavin is a football player. Yeah. <laughs> that's he's what a, I he's like a to left say. tackle. He's not the size of a left tackle, but he's a left tackle. He tries. So that's a, the thing in my house is like, um, and he does, he practice, gosh, from what, five, five hours a day he's practicing. So um, he comes home, he stinks, he's tired. He stinks. Uh, he stinks. <laughs> he's Bad. tired. So, um, and the girls, you know, they have their chores that they have to do in the house and that kind of stuff. And right now, Gavin, he still does his chores. He still has some. But he's kind of got a little bit more of a pass because he's not getting home until 7, 7.30 at night. So um, I like to say, I like to remind the girls all the time that Gavin is a football player. I'm just like, he's a football player. He loves to say that when it's time to take out the trash, too. Yeah, I'm a football I, player. I play football. I play football. I'm like, no, nah, buddy, that's not how that works. <laughs> Mamey said he's got a million dollar smile. He does have a nice he smile. He has a beautiful smile. He's a beautiful boy. He's he would handsome. Not he would not appreciate me he's saying handsome, that. Not, he's not handsome, not beautiful. He's beautiful. I love him. He's very sweet, very smart, very good. Debbie, we're printing those on mulberry rice paper. Mulberry rice paper. So it looks like a washi paper, except for a little bit thinner with some thicker... Uh, fibers mixed in I love the pumpkins Mama Disney said good memories of the boys getting into the van with that awful stench tired Ooh. and hungry but I'm sure miss Friday night lights he's hungry hungry is the he's big always one. hungry always hungry and he's he football stinks. he stinks has um, a smell to it, that's for sure. Let's see, I'm just gonna go like this. Ja Jamie, uh, are you talking about these things that we're making today? Or the uh, decoupage paper? The decoupage paper we will have online by the end of next week. Now I can actually put these online much faster. They might not want them if they see me put a bow on it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, there's there's more to this than just the decoupage. I totally forgot about that. I can, yeah, she's talking I can, about the 10 items. Yeah, I can I can show the ones I already did. She, yeah, she'll show you the ones she's already done. She wants to know if they're going to be online for sale or... I, I can, yeah, I can do these. She might not want it with the bow, though. Or we can just have, we can get her to message us on Facebook. Either way, it'll be yeah, Either way, yeah. No, no, Cambone. We got a corgi, corgi, guys. And if you don't have a corgi, they bark. They bark at everything. Okay, so I do I want it to go. And around. she's fixing to start barking any minute. Come here. You're so goofy. Don't be barking. You're a good dog. I think I'll just go this way. I think I'll just go this way. Yeah, you're right about their locker room. Their locker room is horrible. The field house. I yeah. can't even stand to walk past it. I'm like walking out the other. I'm hopping over the fence to get out of the games because you have to walk by the field house. <laughs> it's terrible. 
they do look hand painted. They uh, they're really good. I just realized that we did the same exact image. No, we didn't. No, okay. this one's Ooh. different. I was like, come on. Nope, it's different. We've done so many pumpkins that it's kind of like. Yeah, all the pumpkins blend together at this they, point. Yeah, they kind of blend together right We now. do a lot of the uh, blocks. We the do a block lot of the sitters. block sitters. And we'll be selling those block sitters, I think, as DIY kits where we ship you the stuff and or we can ship the stuff out and we'll all we'll prep we can prep it. We can go ahead and stain them and then ship it out with a little thing of Dixie Bell paint, some Mod Podge and a little right. bit of clear coat. And then some some uh decoupage papers. Yeah. May May said, Will those be in the store in person? Because of the cloud credit and all. The cloud credit and all. Yeah. Yes, her, they will be. Because we have a bunch of these tins. I, I do have a bunch for that. Okay, so let me get the ones and show you while these are drying up. So if you noticed, the ink is not running on the rice paper, even though it's inkjet printed. And like I said, that's because we treat them with a fixative. A fixative spray. The same stuff that you'd use on a canvas. Not to be confused with workable. Workable fixative allows you to keep working on a piece after you've sprayed it because it adds a little bit of texture to the, okay. to the paper. Here she goes. Here is the ones that I did. They are old tins that came, that we found in the back of the store that her mama had gotten. They were originally roof t uh, ceiling tin tiles back in the day and they were just yanked out and tossed in a box and that's where we got those from and then this is the other one uh take slide it to the left to this way there you go slide it to the right a little bit more there you go right there so these are, are actually what she was she's doing with the what she's doing with all these this is actually what she's doing and she made the bows. I made the bows, but I'm not a bow maker. Like bows is not my thing at all. I'm horror. I can't. I cannot tie a bow. Do not. So I was like, I have to go with a messy bow, but I really like it with the bow, and then it'll sit. Which I don't know. Everybody's complimenting you on the bows. Yeah, do you like even the bows? even May May said that yeah. bow, yuck. Yeah, the bow, yuck. Absolutely. <laughs> See, look. Yeah, see, it's on a stand. Here, let me switch to a different yeah. scene. That's on the stand. Yep, I think it looks cool. Everybody like says it. your bow looks great. The bow's amazing. The bow's awesome. Debbie cool. said that. That's awesome. Tina said it's beautiful. Judy says Shannon can teach you how to make a bow. Shannon could teach me how to make a bow, or Shannon can just make me some bows. That's what I say. Make me some bows, Shannon. I made a bow and tied it to something. I can't remember. It was horrible. It was horrible. Well, those look good. I told you. These are messy good. bows, yeah. This one, I didn't add no ribbon to it. I just did the burlap and stuff. Because I, they had so much color in it. But, I mean, these have color in it, too. But I love the pumpkins with the sunflowers. And these bows have little mushrooms on them. And then, or this ribbon does. And then this ribbon has gnomes on a pumpkin. And I thought that was really cute, too. But I want to save and do some of these for Christmas, for sure. I think that'd be really cute at Christmas time, too. But these are sealed up and everything. So that's just how it looks when it's all done. So I did, I have these. She likes showing off her projects. And I don't blame her. Because okay. I tend to like to show off my stuff too. That's stupid. Okay, so. I can. If I was going to put a bow on this one, I would put a bow on the side. But I need to seal it up first before I put the bow on there. Do you? Not really, because I'm just going over it lightly. And I'm just not go where the bow is. 
Mary said the raffia bows are a nice touch. I like the raffia bows. Tina said absolutely amazing. Let me show you how I make this bow. And Patricia says, so will these be in a kit to purchase? No. I can't do these in a kit because I only have so many. Yeah. When like I, I don't. We probably have 50 total. Is all we I have. don't even know if I have 50. If you look, it's not as many as you think. I, there's a good chance there's only like 20, 25. Are you serious? Yeah. It's not as many. No. And I'm, um, when I was looking through them, there's like one or two that you really couldn't use. So I, this, I'm probably doing this completely wrong, but this is how I do it. <laughs> Here we go. She's fixing to make a bow. This is how I do it, and it's probably completely wrong. There's probably a way better way of doing this. So, but I'm not a good bow maker. Also, you don't want me to wrap your presents. That is true. Because <laughs> I'm not good at that either. And then I just put some on there. And then I put some more of this on here. And then I put... more ribbon on there like it says messy and I mean it's messy Kimberly said you do you in May May's <laughs> words and I might I don't even know if I need this much on here Damn I bone. put it on here come here and then I just take this um, jute stuff, which this one's pretty thick. I probably could use a thinner one. And then I just try to cinch it up. Let's see if I need to go this way. And tie it up. Another May Mayism. We don't do perfect. That reminds me of my old math teacher used to say, I never promised you a rose garden. These are not perfect by no means. I'm sure somebody looks at them and say, what did they try here? <laughs> <laughs> what did they try to do here? <laughs> what did they try this to is, do here? This is terrible. What is this? Sometimes what? the cutest, prettiest bows happen by accident. Like Barb said. <laughs> Just happy accidents. There's no happy wrong. Happy accidents. That's what, what's his face used to say, right? Uh, this happy little accident, Bob yeah, Ross. Bob Ross. I had the first whole season of Bob Ross on uh, Amazon. Th yeah, I did. I bought the whole first season, didn't yeah, I? Yeah, the or, kids love it. Yeah, the kids don't love watching Bob <laughs> Ross. I do. Okay, so after I do that, is which I don't even know if I'm doing it backwards or not. But after I do that, I just take my ribbon. Mary said the bow looks, she likes how the bow looks rustic and vintage. It, it goes with the tin, so it doesn't need to be perfect. Yeah, because <laughs> okay. all you're doing is framing the tin with the yeah. bow, right? That's all you're really doing Kinda with it. I like that. Oh. Yeah, I like, I like watching Ross. Uh, the, uh, okay. if you're looking for a modern, uh, painter who's similar to Bob Ross, uh, Paint with Kevin, or Painting with Kevin, or Kevin Paints. I can't remember the name of his YouTube channel. He's really awesome. That's right up your alley. I can't paint like that. Kimberly says she lives Bob Ross. <sighs> What's that thing he does with the brush? He calls it a mirage, where he takes it just... <laughs> you don't know. I don't know. I, I can't remember what he calls it. Add a little magic or something. What was it a happy little tree or something like that? Yeah, he's going to add a happy little tree happy right little here. Happy little tree right here. Happy little rock. Yeah. But then he does that thing with his brush where he goes over it and... Smooth blends it basically, soft blending with oil paint with that broad fat brush that he uses. He does make it look easy, and I have learned it is not that easy, even digitally. 
it's not that easy. Now, if you're looking for a digital program to give you the, the greatest, it looks like real paint, but both oil and watercolor, it would have to be Rebel 6. Uh, Corel Painter can't hold a candle to that. All right. So then, should I take it? Should I do my ribbon? Yeah. You're asking the wrong person. I know nothing about making bows. Nothing. So I'm going to take this ribbon. I kind of want to make sure that I'm getting my gnomes. It needs to be a little bit. I dabble in it, Mackie. I don't do a lot of it. But uh, I do like... I've really gotten into digital here lately. But I like painting with acrylics. Uh, golden open is what I like to use the most because it's a heavy body. It simulates oil. And I'm not very tolerant to... Uh, paint thinners like chemicals. I have to do that stuff outside. So I've stayed away from oils. And I, I suck at watercolor. And then carefully not burn myself with the hot glue. I'll I have these out. rubber silicone yeah. tips that go in your finger, but I don't Six. have any here. They're all at the store. Carl Albertson said, Clack Attack sent me. Ah. Nice to have you here, Carl. Yeah. Mackie Robertson said, what a great hobby. It is. It is. Okay. I so. like I like doing it. You know, I took some some art classes out at the with a lady named Chris Cruz. I may have attended some of them. And she was pretty good. Uh, Brenda Berry is uh, excellent. I mean, she taught me a lot while I was in an art class. Especially about watercolors. That's it. That's my bow. Good job. That's my messy bow. <laughs> Bring it down in a frame some. There we go, right there. That looks good. So like I said, yeah. You might not want it with the bow. <laughs> They're saying good job. I like it. I love this ribbon with the gnomes. I really, really do. I forgot to do these. She said your bow is gorgeous. Uh, we got some clack attacks going on. Heck yeah. Kimberly said, I need this. <laughs> Lisa, I made it. Mama said, very pretty. I made it. All right. Carol said, gorgeous. Just heard of us from May May Made It. Minnesota Makers, Clack Attack from Minnesota. So on this one, I would put the bow up here. Shauna said, hi, from California. Hi. Granny June said, beautiful. Thank you, thank you. She can't see the screen because I have it pointed at me. I'm going to do the same thing. You're making another bow? I'm going to make a bow for this one. Because I'm going to put this bow up top. So I'm just going to make another messy bow real quick. And then I'm going to do the frames, I think. Robert said clack attack. Clack attack. Clack shack said I missed one. I know what he's doing. He's right. What is he right? I'm saying a bunch of stuff, uh, is what he's saying. <laughs> and I just now realized it. I'll throw that on there. So about how long are you cutting these? Um, I think it's about 11 inches, because I'm actually going a little, I'm the wrong way. I can't do math out. Yeah, it's about 11 inches. I was doing my math right. Thank goodness. Wow, we got a clack attack from Belize. Where's, where's that? Where's that? <laughs> Where's that? Let's see. It's a country. Okay, okay. In Central America. Let's do it that way. All right. I'm going to do the Just same thing. south of Mexico. See, they're telling us right here. Oh, okay, okay.
you feel that one? Tense it this way. Debbie says she's fussy cutting ephemera, which is not enjoyable. I don't I don't think I could fussy cut. I I hear Shannon and Mamie talk about it and I just don't know if that's a job for me. I don't know. You don't think you could fussy cut? I don't think I could fussy cut at all. I don't think that that's a... I could do a tedious paint, but I don't think I could do fussy cutting. I'm go like that. I'm just going to trim away this extra stuff. Meme says she's proud of you. She's going to try to have a, she's going to try to watch while she's at lunch, but the signal is bad. Have a great rest of the show. Thank you, May May. Have a good Thanks, May May. We wouldn't do it if you wouldn't have said so. <laughs> yeah. Slide myself. There we go. Quit playing around with that. No fussy cut, and that's why we have a scanning cut. Ooh, that's what I would have. Well, that won't do you no good on that, will it? Oh, no. I'm just saying that'd be a machine that I would want. <laughs> that scans the item and then cuts it for you? Yeah, yeah, I think so. That's what I would want. Tina said you should do more lives. And Sandy says you're a natural. I don't know about that. <laughs> Very nice, though. She was really nervous leading up into it. No kidding. Well, it's because I have the tendency to not talk while I'm working. Like, I just focus on what I'm doing. And then I also have the tendency of stopping and doing, a, you know, something else. But it's the reason why the live show works today because we had this block of time, is which this is what exactly what I've done, what I what I I would have done if we weren't live. This is the exact same thing I would have done. Yeah, except for you to just have been quiet. Except for I would have been very quiet. Yeah. And then if she would have said, "Hey, come look at this," while I was working on uh, yeah. uploading stuff onto the online. Come store. tell me what you think of this. Come tell me what you think of this. This is yesterday in the carport, I had painted all that stuff and I staged it in my carport so I could figure out exactly how I wanted it to go. She's talking about the window displays the window display. the store. So, um, every couple, is which our youngest came home from uh, school. So while she was here getting her snack and everything, I was like, come outside and tell me what you think. Come outside and tell me what you think. Um, as I was moving stuff around. And then we went to the football game. So I'm really excited to get that window put together. I'm excited to see how it all turns out. And Lorraine, that's the that's the only way that we know to keep it from. You know, you see people bake it in the oven and stuff, and we haven't had much success with that. Our since I've used fixatives in the past to keep uh, pencil drawings from getting smudging all over the place, we tried that and it worked amazing. And so that's what we've stuck with. Clack said you're doing great. Oh, nice glue you. gun. Yeah, it's a gorilla yeah, glue gun. That's a gorilla glue gun. It gets hot. That has hot and low, and I don't ever use it on low. I and it can take the long. long it can take the long glue sticks too. Yeah, which I'm out of those. But I would much rather have some of those. All right, so there's that one with the messy bow. Which I might can trim this one up a little bit. So you're shortening it to make it frame better? Yeah, it was just like, and then this one needs to be a little bit shorter. So that way it lays like layers. So it has layers. Yeah. There we go. 
wherever I can. Yeah, Fixative is an amazing product. So now these are all dry, so um, I'll get my clear coat and I'll just clear coat it all up and then let it dry and then it's good to go. It's ready to go after Roddy makes the little stand for it. Okay, so I want to work on the picture frames and then I think that'll be it. Thanks, Tamitha. I, I'm bad about not saying stuff like that. Make sure you subscribe, thumbs up, and share. Oh, I'm, I'm terrible at it. Okay, so these are my images. All right, Jamie, you have fun at work, and thank you for tuning in. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, let me see. Yeah, Mary said that if the bow was perfect, <laughs> she don't think it would complement the tin the way that your bow does. And I think she's right, because it does. It pairs very well. I'm going to tear these around. Tam said it's stunning. Thank you. Thank you. I like, I like doing stuff like that for sure. Because it's, it's, it's like different. actually you're reusing something that normally would have ended up in the garbage. Um, it's different. You're not going to find that. Uh, anywhere else you're not gonna go to any other store and find it it's just one of a kind and I mean it'll last for a long time because it's metal so and once it gets sealed up there's no reason to have to worry about it ever right what you call them okay so I'm going to Kimberly said you have a great way of teaching this craft oh thank thanks you. for sharing Thank you, thank you. We've been trying to get her to do it for a while now. But ultimately, May May called and said, this is what you're going to do. And so I said, okay. Because she called, she actually called me. She didn't call Missy. She didn't call me. And so after I got off the phone with her, I said, hey, Missy, you're going live this Friday. And you're going to do an <sighs> online class with May May too. Stress me out. Instant anxiety. It did too. It did. It stressed her out. She was stressed out about it. She was stressed about it yesterday too. Okay, so all I did was put uh, mosh podge on the top part. Would these hold up well outside? Uh, uh, not without. Uh, I don't think so. Not without putting something on there like a waterproof. Uh, a wa um, uh, yeah. You could use gator hide, uh, spar varnish, but the problem with spar varnish is it's going to yellow. It would yellow. Um, yeah, it would definitely need... Um, a product like gator hide. Yeah, a waterproof, because the clear coat wouldn't be able to withstand that kind of... Now, if you're talking about like outside, just uh, like on your door... On a covered porch. On a covered porch. I think it would be fine. Pati uh, covered patio. It, yeah, it would. it would be fine. You just don't want it getting beat down with the sun and the wet. That's where uh, gator hide would be the top coat of choice after you right. put a clear coat over it. So then it just pops in. Is which? See, is this the right thing? So I think that this needs to be distressed. You think so? What's that? The frame. So that oh, way no, let's ask have... everybody else. Hold it closer to the camera. Do y'all think that should be distressed or I think I'm gonna should we just it. leave it? That that flower photo looks amazing. Yeah, the flower is gorgeous, but I think it needs to be distressed. Let me get um, a sanding pad real quick. Nancy said yes, distressed. Yeah, distress it. Because it's too white. It's too white, it's too white. Yep, I think by sheer volume, the stress is the answer. Yeah. Which is great because it's not all evenly coated everywhere, so the stress will work pretty quick, um, especially see. with some uh, 120 grit sandpaper. 
What do I have? Super fine. Nice wood. Oh, that's that's like four hundred grit right there. Yeah, yeah. It's just super fine. So, what she's using is a rad pad, four hundred grit sandpaper. I might need to get the other one. It's smoothing it out. It's so. 400 grit's not really made for distressing. distressing. I think I have that. Let me see. I think I have another one. We didn't plan on distressing. We didn't know that I didn't think about it. the distressing. Or we'd already had the sandpaper up here. Where's that contractor pack at? 3M. It is. Hold on. <laughs> Sorry yeah. about this, guys. We didn't realize that we didn't have our sandpaper. But yeah, 400 grit is used for smoothing, not for distressing. If I distress something, it would be with 80 grit, like when I'm doing furniture. And that's really aggressive. Missy likes to use 120 or 240. Sometimes you can get it in a weird grit, like 220. But generally, I buy all our sandpaper and contractor packs. I like using 3M. I really like the rad pads by Surf Prep. They last forever. They're washable. But we used to care those in stock. But uh 220. 220 is what she's using and that's by 3M. And they sell those in the contractor packs pretty uh it's much more affordable that way. Uh, yeah, because I go through some sandpaper. When I used to turn, uh, when I used to make wooden pens and use my lathe a lot, I, I would go through sandpaper, and that's when we learned to buy the contractor packs. I'm notorious for overproducing on a video. So I'll I'll be adding graphics and stuff. Uh, lens flares and effects missy had like some butterflies around her head one time it's just i did that on purpose to make it funny to me my kids didn't like it though so i'm just gonna let's see go around the edges too there we go <laughs> I like it like that better. You might have to hold it up to the camera a little bit closer. Yeah, you can see the distress in there. I can get it back in here. I might have. Hey, Jim, how are you doing today? There we go. Let me switch views so y'all can okay. see it a little bit better. That's the angles. Let me Let me move this there we go. Can you see the distressing? Yes. All right. Can y'all see that? It's all distressed now. Yeah. That's good. I like it. She likes it. She said. Is that you can still go around it with? Okay. So this is. Dixie Bell Best Dang Wax in Clear. So this is when I'm doing projects like this. This is what I seal up the chalk paint. And I just, usually I have a wax brush, but for something small like this, I don't have a lot, like, it's just too big. Clack said it just needs a little bit of laser engraving. That's right. To make it look even better. Yeah, yeah. All right, so I just put a little bit of wax on the uh, microfiber table, and I just use these, I get these anywhere. I mainly steal them from Rodney, but yeah, I buy a bunch of them. He buys a bunch of them, and then he wonders where they go, and I'm like, I don't know. And she does; she takes them. I'll even take them. The, I even went and bought some cheap Dollar General ones, and she took those I took too. Those. Look, they when you're buffing your furniture, or a piece like this that you've chalk painted, once you go over it with that final sand, and you make get your chalk paint really super smooth. You, um, like for furniture, I brush on the wax and then I let it sit for about 
30 minutes or so and then I come through with these rags and I just buff it until it's like buttery smooth but that's how I seal up my chalk paint um, on stuff like this that's one of the sealers we use is wax and yeah. we use it a lot on furniture and little stuff like this uh, the other ones we use are actually clear coat top coats. So these actually have the original backs to them that I'll have to get um, the staple gun and just staple it back. Um, and then I'll, but before I do that, I, when I go to do all the clear coating on everything, I'll just clear coat this so that way it's nice and um, sealed up. And then that's that on that one. So, okay, same thing for this one. I'm going to just go ahead. So now this... I'm hoping that this one looks okay because this one is, um, the frame is like, I don't know what's going on with it. It's just how it was when I got it. So I'm going to just see if I can distress it and be okay. Jim, when I, when I used to make pins, I would, uh, I used, uh, cyanoacrylate, uh, basically super glue i found that to be a really hard finish i actually had a zebra wood pen that i made that missy washed it in the washer probably about 20 times and the, the finish is still brand new but it's been years it's been golly four or five years since i've made anything on the lathe yeah i have it coated in oil so it doesn't the bed doesn't rust uh, Mary, I make frames very rarely. Uh, most of these frames that we have are just frames from the store. Where these are old. Um, what does the back of it say? These frames are old. Um, this is what was stamped on the back of it, S and H. I don't... I have no clue where they're from, but these are the back of them. So this just goes back... Will attach back and then hang up or whatever. But have you tried using hemp oil, Jim, as a sealer? I'll just go back on there. I find it gives it a it gives a wood a unique luster. Okay, so this one I'm gonna have to be. I'm going to have to tear it around it. But I almost, because the pink flowers bled through it. Look at that. You can't see it on you camera. Can't see it. There's yeah. like, you can see the pink flowers. Well, maybe the orange and the pink will blend well with it. Maybe so. Keep you from having to coat over it. But if I have to, I can just touch it up with the... Mary said those are very pretty. I think they're gorgeous. I love the vintage florals. <laughs> yeah, clack. You you, know, you probably didn't, won't get one of those out of this guy. Actually, I probably could do one, honestly, because that's the, the power tool I'm the most familiar with is a wood lathe. And Mary, the, the pink bleed through was so small. I don't know how she saw it because I'm looking at it too and I can't, you can't, I can't see, see it. it. I can see it. She's just so tuned in on that. I can see that, John. Thanks, Tina, for watching. All right. But there's better pen turners out there than me, I promise. Uh, uh, what's his face? RJB Wood Turner. That's the guy I learned from with uh, as far as pens go. Because he did a lot of experimenting. And that's what I like to do as well. My favorite thing to make is actually segmented vases. I get my images from different, different people. Sometimes I use AI art generators. And sometimes I just make the artwork myself. And... If you want to get into digital painting, there's a free program called Krita. I think you get it at krita.org. And it's really it's really useful. And you don't have to go all out when you buy a tablet. I don't use one with a screen on it. I've been using the same tablet for probably 15 years. 
This one's definitely more got more character to it because of the frame. But I, I did, it doesn't really bother me if I can get it in. What's stopping it? You do live the quack shack will decide. <laughs> Did I put it? Okay, there it goes. I see what it is. So I started doing the, the lathe stuff when uh, we had a big family tragedy happen, and it was that was one way I coped with it. I bought a Harbor Freight one, twelve inch. Wasn't it a twelve inch? Yeah, yeah it was a twelve small. inch. And then uh, I was making bowls, making pens, using that it. That is broke. What That's is? why it's like that. Uh, the frame is broke. Oh. Uh, That's okay. That's nothing little Bondo can't fix. Yeah. By the way, Bondo does make a wood filler. I, would, I just learned that recently. It's not bad. I don't know why it's like that. It's old. It's like... I don't think this is actually wood. I think it's paper. Holy cow, it's laminated cardboard. Is that what it is? Yes. And that is old. I don't think they make them the same way. Now they just use press board or pressed. It's MDF. like layers and layers. Cindy said, "Just put a bow over it." Just put a bow over it. But yeah, it's just yeah. it's it's pressed cardboard, it's layered old. together. But look how pretty it is. I don't know if you can tell on camera. Or actually, you might be able to tell on mine because mine auto adjust. See that? Just cardboard laminated together. It's pretty crazy. Mary said it adds character. It's rustic. It does. Yeah. You're right, Clack. It's rustic. There you go. It fits. Look, I think they're cute. I think I would just um, maybe get some glue and, and like glue it down and then take my um, white brush and then just touch it up right there. Yeah. And then maybe they'll do a little bit more distressing. But I think that's all it needs is it just needs like a... Uh, what's that glue? Art glitter glue? Art glitter glue? Yeah. No. <laughs> just need some art glitter glue. Or put some tight bond on it. Yeah. Since it's cardboard. But I think they're cute. That also explains why there's different thicknesses on the trim, too. I was wondering about that. I've never seen one made out of that. That's it. I think they're cute. They I'm, are. Not, I'm not going to go through and wax this one or anything because um, I'm going to see if we can just. Uh, put some shoot some glue in there to just glue that back up and then um, touch up the paint so I'm not going to wax that or anything like that until we get that but that's it <laughs> other than sealing everything up with a clear coat that's it Clack said if I had a CNC machine then I could make those if you had a, yeah yeah absolutely I've I've wanted a CNC machine for years, and yeah. you know, it's just one of those things. I've never done it. But there's a lot of machines that we want. There is a lot of machines. <laughs> I I, I would love to have a, a large bandsaw too. That would be cool. There's a lot of machines. That but we it want. is what it is. Oh. I've been using my nine inch for years. Yeah. That is it. That's everything. That's everything, other than clear coating. But I kind of want to wait on that because I just want the Mod Podge to be full of cure and then I need I mean this thing right here needs a bow but I'll wait on that too and then my Christmas blocks those are my Christmas blocks yeah you'll have to hold them up because I turned that camera yeah, off you see it uh, we're getting a lot of glare on it yep. there we go Santa the deer Merry Christmas, and then another Santa, but yeah. After that, it's just lining the counter down with clear coat. That's all I gotta do. And that's a pretty straightforward process. Uh, I just use the same thing, like these kind of brushes right here, and I just uh, open up my clear coat, thin coat, everything. Um, it you doesn't show take them long to dry. Three things again on oh, yeah. the big camera. There's my. That way they can see. So I'll seal this all up with the clear coat. 
and the rust and everything like that. And then this one will go sideways, which Rodney will cut the wood and just make the bases for them so they fit. Hush. Cam. Come here, pup. Um, and then, yeah, that's it. And then the frame that we just did. Guys, we appreciate y'all watching with us today. Yep. And we're glad that, that y'all uh, came along and watched and found us. Yep. Very supportive. I appreciate that. Very supportive. Thank you. And uh, thank you, Clack, for uh, helping support our channel. Yep. Uh, May May, Vince, Shannon. All you guys are awesome. All the made it, yep. all the Clack attacks. And. Um. Uh, just check our website for the Dixie Bell products and um, anything that we made. You know, um, we can either message us, uh, send us an email, and we can see about um, shipping it out or all the stuff that we made today because it might not go online immediately, but we can work on getting it online. Because I didn't even think about putting the tins online. No, we didn't. I didn't the, think. the store... Right. So, Displays. but if you're interested in them, just send us um, an e send us an email. We can figure it out for sure. Yeah, um, and you can uh, message us on Facebook too. Uh, that tends to be a lot faster. Right. Is uh. We appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. That's right. Uh, Clack said that uh, I can use the shack for a base if need to for a collab. That would oh. be actually that's actually a good idea. Clack, I have a mini lathe. I don't just have a big one. Because when my Harbor Freight one broke, I talked to Missy and let me get a real one. So that's how I ended up with a Jet 1440. And uh, then I went for pen turning. I needed a mini lathe. So she let me get one of those. And Harbor Freight had them on sale cheap at the time. I think it was 129 Now they're like 269 But yeah, that sounds like a plan. We'll uh, figure something out. Because I'm a little rusty when it comes to the lathe. But we'll see y'all later, guys. Yep. And y'all have a good night. And uh, that's about it. That's about it. We'll be back. See ya. Yep. Bye, y'all. Uh, Rustic Relics on Facebook as well. At Rustic Relics. R-U-S-T-I-Q-U-E. Yeah, we're going to have a lot of projects coming up the blocks we're going to make those diy kits uh we have a class that we're we actually have an online class that we're working on so that's going to be pretty good uh it'll be the same one that we're teaching at uh craft acropolis just about it'll be a little bit different oh thank you craft acropolis is going to be a lot of fun we always look forward to may may's large events missy goes and Hangs out, helps out sometimes. She mainly just goes to to harass Shannon and May May. Yeah, but it's just it's just fun, just good fun. But yeah, I like to see what everybody's doing. I think this will help you as far as your being nervous to do the online class with May May. We shall see. Because her first online class is actually with May May. May May's going to help her through the whole process. So. In-person classes we're kind of used to because we do Dixie Bell paint classes at the store all the time. And yep. uh, well, actually, we had to put, we had to put them on hiatus about two months ago because of so much stuff being stored in the back. We had a bunch of layaways come in, and that takes up our storage area in the back, so we we can't have our table set up for the classes. I gotta get you some water. Okay. Well, y'all, I guess that's it for for real now. If y'all have any questions, hit us up on uh, Facebook. You can hit us up at uh, rustyrelics.com in the chat box if you want to. I will warn you, though, the chat box is a lot slower than Facebook. Facebook's instant. We use uh, it's It's quick. And uh, we look forward to seeing y'all next time. We'll get it scheduled, and y'all have a good rest of your day. Bye. Bye, everybody.